we're on holiday, spending time with friends, or even just eating lunch, most of us are taking pictures and videos with these things all the time. Now, although saving memories is a wonderful thing to do, it often means we clog our camera roll with a huge amount of content, much of which, if we're honest, we don't really bother to look back on. The reason being, scrolling through hundreds of images and videos sometimes feels like a bit of a chore when you have to wade through so much content of one event. That's where video montages come in, a series of shots or clips placed together to form a sequence. With montages, we can create beautiful short and succinct videos ready to look back on in the future with ease. That might be, for example, a summary of a poignant event like a graduation, a portfolio of our best work to show future employers, or even a roundup of our favourite pictures of our furry friends. And guess what? We can create these video montages really easily in LumaFusion. So without further ado, here's our simple step-by-step -step guide that you can follow to make the editing process a breeze. Step one is to go through your camera roll and select the images and videos from the particular trip or event that you want to make a montage of. Place them in their own folder and give it a name. That way, when you're in your LumaFusion project, you don't have to wade through all the images and videos on your camera roll to find the content you need. They're all in one neat place. Step two is to choose the suitable frame aspect ratio for your project. That's the ratio of its width to its height. An easy way to pick this is to go into your album that you've just created and look at the content you've got, seeing whether it's mostly 16x9, so landscape, or portrait, which is 9x16. If your images are displayed as square in the album view, simply tap on these three dots and select aspect in order to get a better overall picture of what your content looks like. Editing a project in the same aspect ratio to your images and videos will make the process a lot easier as you won't need to make any frame and fit adjustments, but you should also think about where your project is going to go. For example, you might want a square video for your Instagram feed or perhaps a vertical video for your TikTok account. If you change your mind on this when you've already opened up your new project, you can change the frame aspect ratio by tapping the settings cog and selecting the three horizontal lines next to aspect ratio, which will list your choices. Step three is to choose the music for your montage. It's often easier to choose the music first before you start editing your media, as you'll be able to set the length of your videos and images to the beat of the music. If you're stuck for what backing track you like, think about the tone you're trying to achieve. Is it happy, sad, thought-provoking or adventurous? And what speed do you want? Maybe relaxed and calm or perhaps fast-paced and exciting? This will help you to search through the bank of royalty-free content available to Storyblock subscribers here in the media library. If you don't use Storyblocks, you can bring your own tracks in by either importing them into the app or through your device's music library. Once you've found your piece of music, bring it down onto the first audio track where this green audio wave symbol is. At this stage, I like to lock my audio into place so it isn't going anywhere, regardless of what I edit around it. Step four is to start adding your videos and images to your project. Most montages add clips in the order that events happened, telling a story as they play out. This is up to you and how you desire your own project to play, but regardless, you need to get your clips from the media library down onto the timeline at this stage. So I find it useful to mute my audio tracks here on the timeline, so I'm only listening to my background track as I'm watching my project, but this is up to you. Now, if you have certain clips you want to play at certain points of the music, like at the beginning of a chorus, for example, you might choose to first put your timeline into overwrite mode, and that way you have full flexibility of placing shots wherever you like. This will stop them sticking together and jumping up your timeline. Other editors prefer using the magnetized insert mode, so they might choose to use multiple layers to organize their clips. Whatever your workflow, Take time to really select what clips and images you want to use in your montage. This is where the preview window comes into play, as you can tap to preview your clip before selecting it and use the trimming handles to choose only the highlights that you'll want to look back on. This is also great if you have multiple photos that look similar here in the media library, meaning you can pick the best one for your project before dragging it into the timeline. If you already have a good grasp of what you want to use, tap the multi-select button to highlight it and then select clips from the library to add a group selection to your project that you can just drag down in one go. Bear in mind though that these will appear on the timeline in the order you select them. 
When you add a group of images in one go, you'll notice they're automatically all the same length. To have control over the default length of an image, you can change the duration of project images here under settings. So use the slider to choose how many frames they're going to last. I'm going to choose just 15 frames. And now you can see when I drag one or multiple images to the timeline, they will automatically come in at 15 frames in length. So once you've added all your clips to the timeline and made sure they're in the order you desire, trim them carefully to match the beat of the music, zooming in if required to get your perfect timings frame by frame. If like me, you've muted your tracks to allow the core piece of music to dominate the montage, you can always triple tap a clip to allow the audio to jump off and play within your project if you like, altering the volume of that clip as desired. Step five, watch your project through and alter the framing as you like it in the frame and fit editor. If for example, you're using a vertical video in a landscape project where it doesn't fill the screen like this, you may at this point choose to zoom the clip in to fill out the space. Or you could even just double up the clip on the timeline and expand that lower layer and blur out the background in the effects editor. And that way the whole of your clip is on screen, but without the black bars either side, creating this cool effect. That leads us nicely onto step six, which is to spice up your project with any additional visuals or effects that will make it stand out. Why not add a few transitions between poignant clips? Use the color and effects editor to highlight an important moment, or even add keyframes to add movement and direction to the piece. These preset keyframes are great and are very quick to add by just tapping on them in the frame and fit editor. If you're feeling fancy, you could also add text to introduce your montage, like a title dragged down like this from the media library and then personalize for your project. Or of course, you could even design one by yourself from scratch. Adding shapes and images on top of our montage can also help us jazz it up. But also, most importantly, they can help us add vital context. After all, we might be watching these back in many years to come. So think about adding dates, funny quotes, or anything you just want to remember later on. Once you're happy with your work, export as usual, saving in your camera roll, sharing on social media, or uploading to your favorite cloud storage. Video montages are something to look back on and smile. So have fun with these and create something to remember. That's all from us for this week. So take care and we'll see you soon, either in person at the LumaTouch Academy workshops or right here next week on the LumaTouch YouTube page.